Well, good morning, fellow PMPs. This is Jeff McGovern, the Pest Coach. And the last few days, I've been seeing on a number of the Pest Control Facebook pages, situations where people are dealing with German roach problems and they're wondering what to do. And I've seen a lot of the commentary and the recommendation I always give is to go ahead as the first service in these situations, do a forced monitor. So I thought, let me do a quick video on the first portion of that process. Because the important thing to remember is, if you're going into a thoroughly infested account, you're going in with your company's time and effort to do the right thing, you've got to remember, you're probably making up for somebody else's failure. That's simply the reality. Very few of us have ever gone into a German roach account that was totally virgin and never been treated before. It's usually a situation where another PMP or multiple PMPs have failed in the process and therefore we have to come in and fix it because you already have a frustrated client. Now, the number one thing to remember is you want to see some history. I prefer to have at least a year. If I can get it, I'll get five years. And I'll take the time to go back through and see what was done and what was reported. That shows concern for the client. It's not unlike a physician that wants to review records or a dentist that wants to see your dental records. What's been going on? Where have you been prior to me coming on board and trying to fix the problem for you? Now, once you go through those records, you're going to see a pattern of failure. What you have to do is mitigate that failure. The best way to do that, starting out, is to do what I call a forced monitor on the account. Now, I developed the process back in the 1980s in order to figure out cockroach distribution in commercial accounts so we could get rid of them. And I've carried that forwards over the years and where it slowed down a little bit was when everybody started using bait and they all thought, oh, that's the answer. We're solving it with bait. Well, we weren't. Because if we were, we wouldn't have the serious situations we have with German roaches today. Now, the primary tool, once you have reviewed the prior records, you've gone through the facility and you've made an assessment and an evaluation. Don't do an inspection. Do an assessment and an evaluation because that shows value to your client. You're gonna be interviewing people during that process. You're gonna be asking the question, where was the last place you saw a roach? And I can credit that question to Austin Frischman because I heard it from Doc 30 plus years ago. Help the people focus. Where was the last place you saw a roach? Now, you've created a map of the facility and in today's world, this is pretty easy because most facilities already have a document showing where everything is in the facility, be it tables and chairs, equipment, fire exits, what have you. And using that map, you're going to mark down your discoveries based on that assessment and interviews you're doing with the employees. Then your first service is a distribution of these devices. Now, this happens to be my favorite cockroach trap. It's a ProPest RTU from JF Oaks, and it's got some unique features. First of all, it's ramped on all sides of approach so that when the insect goes into the trap, it goes up a ramp and drops down onto the glue surface. That's called a commitment ramp. It increases your catch rate. The nice thing about these is when you open them up and fold them into shape, the ramps are preformed. So you don't have to worry about folding them in or making a mistake and putting them out improperly. The other nice thing is on the inside of the trap, JF Folks has a black surface in here, which means, of course, underneath the release paper, it's black. Now, what that does is make it somewhat more attractive for the insects to get into. And the fact that it's pre-baited with non-toxic materials to draw them in is even better. And you're going to put a distribution of these out in the facility based on your assessment and evaluation process that you've already done. Now, for sake of example, for those of you that are familiar with restaurant facilities all over the country, and even if you've not been in a lot of them, most of us 
have dined in a Red Lobster or Olive Garden, because I did a lot of this work in those accounts 25, 30 years ago in putting traps out to figure out distribution of German cockroaches. On average, one of those locations is gonna have between 140 and 160 placements done overnight, and that gives us a read as to distribution. Then we can figure out where the cockroaches are actually living. But it's a very simple process. Now, once you've gotten the traps retrieved after that one night, remember, you're putting them in with a map, you're indicating on top of the device the number, the placement zone, you put it on the map so you know exactly where it is. Come back in the next day. Then pick them up. An overnight setting is fine. I like to drop them when they're completing their cleaning services for the night and then I'm gonna get a six or eight hour read time. When in an unstressed population of German roaches, they will reveal where they like to be. Then, based on that, I can figure out what my distribution is. Very, very simple. If you have a German cockroach nymph, on average, that insect will go about 12 inches from point of capture in any given situation. In other words, 12 inches from harborage. So if the German roach nymph is here, 12 inches in every direction, a bubble 24 inches across should be the average range of that nymph. If you've caught males in the trap, the male's range from point of capture is 12 feet in every direction for a bubble 24 feet across. If you've got a female, the female average distribution travel is about six feet in every direction from point of capture, from Harborage, for example. So that would be a bubble 12 feet across. The female with an egg capsule on the back end, gonna be the same as the nymph, about 12 inches in every direction. So if you're looking at the traps with captures, you can figure out the distribution of the insects and then go in and begin your attack. But that is the basics of forced monitoring. I do classes on this on a regular basis. The PMPs that have used it, it has worked for them every single time simply because it told them where they were and where they were not, because that's the whole point here. Because now you know where to concentrate your efforts to deal with the problem. So, this is Jeff McGovern, the pest coach. I can be contacted very easily through my site or I can be given a phone call, whatever but get a hold of me and reach out because we can help you with this problem. Using the JF Oaks traps, it's a very, very successful process. You folks take care and have a wonderful day.